Welcome back. I'm very pleased to say we're joined by an old friend, Joe Weasel. He is the executive producer of enormously important documentary and other products at The Blaze TV, Glenn Beck's Enterprise. He is the director most recently of the Sun City Cell, which ran last week and is now available on demand, a groundbreaking documentary about what we are now confronting in terms of narco-terrorist axes, cartels that are working with enemies of this country who seek to bring not just heroin, not just, you know, people seeking a better life, but jihadists seeking to exterminate us. Joe Weasel, welcome. It's great to have you with us, sir. Good to have you back. Frank, it's great to talk to you. It's great to be back and uh, chat with you about this really important topic. Well, it is a really important topic, Joe, and congratulations on the new film. Uh, Give us in 30 seconds or so kind of the essence of what you found and why it is so important. Well, actually, we were uh, we were contacted. We do a lot of work with Judicial Watch, and uh, one of the things Terrific we try to do. organization. Frank, in fact, we're going to be. We just spoke to one of its leaders, Chris Farrell, a moment ago. Yeah, it, perfect segue. Um, they had had an investigation that had gone on for about five years, and what they really found was it started with two Al Qaeda leaders, actually high level Al Qaeda leaders, who actually flew a private airplane into Anthony, New Mexico. And that whole story started to become the foundation for a, a number of layers, which led to a narco terrorist cell and a distribution network that had normally been used for illegal drugs and human trafficking that has now expanded into terrorism of weapons and material and personnel that has become an ever-increasing threat to the United States. And to the extent that this threat is, in fact, on the rise, um, Joe Weasel, there ought to be obvious concern and corrective actions taken. Joe Weasel is our guest. We're talking about his new documentary, which has really lifted the veil on what is happening, not only south of our border, but inside our country as a result of the rising well, axis, I guess is the best way to put it, between those who seek to bring narcotics and other kinds of things into this country and jihadists who are seeking to be part of that flow. And Joe, you were just talking about how significant a problem this is. Is it being recognized as such by the United States government? Frank, one of the things that I think was most stunning in this project, and when you do a film like this, just to the first thing you have to do, and, and you've worked with us before, and our staff has to research everything, and you have to source everything, and you have to have your ducks in a row because you're going to be challenged. So the first thing you have to do when you approach a project like this is to is to go, well, i got to prove this beyond a shadow of a doubt. And as we started to dig, what we found, I, I thought we would find things, Frank, like tunnels. I thought we would find things like, uh, you know, secret routes and, and just an operating army that would go and uh, that we just needed to get a hold of. And if we just could build a, a fence or if we could just do air reconnaissance that it would take care of that. But what I found, Frank, is a, a major compromise of, of law enforcement and also a major compromise in government. The amount of uh, illicit activity and the amount of bribery from the local to the federal levels, and I don't say this without proof, and you know me well enough to know that we're not going to throw things out there, the level of corruption from the local to the federal level was a tsunami that I wasn't expecting to see. Because the only way you can bring the types of people, the types of materials and things across the Judicial Watch did a a tremendous job of tracking. This film follows an investigation that they started. Once you start to put those pieces together and once you start to look at the documents and you start to put the names together, what I found most discouraging was the level of corruption by our own officials. So until you, you start with the enablers and the people who have profited from this, we, um, we're in trouble. We're in trouble because, um, sadly, there are people who will do literally anything for money. And uh, I think they've rationalized uh, what this is. And I think uh, it's out of control. And, it's a, and what is started by a little payola 
now is a major threat to national security. Uh, Joe, let's drill down on that for a moment, because I, I, there's a famous expression in these border communities that it's either the silver or the lead, uh, that the corruption for money is the preferred course of action for people in law enforcement, people in the judicial branches uh, here and in Mexico, the people who are uh, otherwise responsible for maintaining homeland security. But if they don't play along, they're likely to get whacked by these guys. Did you find that to be a, a, a real consideration, or is this really just a question of people uh, trying to justify, rationalize uh, what is fundamentally all about corruption? Rationalizing. Um, the the level and the types of uh, compromise goes from everything from a couple of hundred bucks to a local law enforcement guy to uh, parties with girls to uh, always finding something to get over someone's head. And we actually had uh, we had two people that we uh, spoke to. We had two sources who were law, uh, you know, involved down there and were able to give us some perspective on law enforcement and government. And one of the disappointing thing was that they have a, a philosophy of saying, we're either going to get you with a few hundred dollars or we're going to get you with the photos of a woman you're not supposed to be with. And um, it, it, believe it or not, sometimes it's just a photograph with someone who's doing something they shouldn't have been, and they hold it over their head. So murder, murder is not required. They're, they're able to use these yeah, techniques. Yeah, I mean, compromising people is uh, an art that they have mastered down there, the cartel perspective. It, it's it's a, uh, an old practice, needless to say, but uh, it, yes. it can be very effective. So, Joe, it, just to sort of tie this together, um, one of the folks that you interviewed, of course, is the president of this uh, outfit, Judicial Watch, which I highly regard as an organization and him as an individual. But Tom Fitton has described this sort of axis between the narco traffickers and, and terrorists, or jihadists, more accurately, as an existential threat to our country. You've alluded to it as a national security threat. How serious a problem does it represent in your estimation? It's a major problem, and I think everybody who's listening to this and people have to understand every town, every city in the United States is a border town now because the, the activity and the threats of the United States are not limited to the border towns. They reach into the Midwest and into throughout the country. Our documentary focuses on a plot that was actually implemented to try to blow up the Sears Tower and the Oprah Winfrey Studios. And it and we follow that plot, and we follow the people that were involved in that in that, that plot, and then we show from that plot and from that group what that set up as far as the next phase of attacks potentially in the United States. And another person we spoke to who's in the film is Andy McCarthy. And when you get the perspective of someone who who actually had to put the blind shake on trial, of course, the first World Trade Center bombing, you start to get a very good education of once they're in the United States, philosophically, what are their targets? Why are they targeted? And then when you look at our documentary, you look at the materials and the people that have come up and you look at this network, you realize that the war isn't only coming, they are in position for their next wave of attacks. They're tapping into an infrastructure that helps enable it in this country, which is the subject of an awful lot of your terrific research as well as uh, documentary materials. Joe Weasel, the executive producer at The Blaze TV. Keep up the good work, and again, congratulations on The Sun City Cell. It is available on demand. Check it out, folks, and Joe, come back to us again very soon. We'll talk with one of his former colleagues, Sarah Carter, next about what's happening in Afghanistan right after this.